My name is Dr. Peter Gold. I'm a total joint replacement surgeon with Panorama Orthopedics at Ortho Colorado Hospital. One of the biggest advantages of doing a MAKO total knee arthroplasty is the preoperative planning. So before the patient even walks into the operating room, we have an opportunity to go over the patient's specific knee and fit the implants that uh, perfectly match their anatomy. So we got a CT scan prior to the surgery, and then we're able to look at this screen here in three dimensions looking at the knee. We can plan to match the implants we're putting in with the patient's anatomy, and we can do a lot of things in six different degrees of motion using the computer system that you really just can't do manually. Before any case, first thing you do is, uh, is scrubbing in. Uh, for me personally, this is a uh, really important time, obviously, for, to make sure that your hands are clean and that we're decreasing any chance for infection. You know, I always like to use this time, uh, take a couple of deep breaths and get as focused and prepared to do the best job we can executing the plan. And now that we're done, let's go uh, do a Mako total knee. Come on. Uh, one advantage of using the robot is that we're able to do a very small release here, but we don't need to expose as much of the knee as maybe when I was doing a manual approach and uh, now we can prep for the, for the makeup. The way that the robot works is it triangulates the knee in space. So the way that it does that is we have two infrared arrays. One of them will go on the femur, one of them will go on the tibia. That way, the robotic system is able to match up the patient's CT scan with the infrared arrays that are attached to the, the femur and the tibias. So this is the, the second biggest advantage in terms of um, what we're actually doing with the, with the Mako robot. So if you look on the screen here showing us the alignment of the knee, how straight it is, what rotation and how we're actually putting the implants in, how much bone we're taking from each side, uh, and then more specifically what the gap is. So the goal of a knee replacement is for it to have equal gaps in extension and then equal gaps in flexion, and you want those to all be equal to each other as well so you have a nice, balanced, stable, functioning knee. So, you know, interestingly in this case, they were tighter on the inside of the knee in extension, but they're actually tighter on the outside of their knee uh, in flexion. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, rotate the femur component um, so that we can try to balance out these numbers. So go ahead and give me two degrees of rotation. So the last thing we do before we actually make cuts is we go back to this original planning screen and we make sure that the position of the implants are exactly where we want. So we'll scroll through this middle screen and we'll look at where the kneecap sits and we're actually gonna move this over slightly and then we'll scroll through and make sure that it fits on the bone on all sides. It looks like it does. So we're ready to go ahead and cut. So with this probe, we verify that the infrared arrays haven't moved. Now we're gonna verify that the saw blade is in the right place. So now we're gonna pull the trigger and it's gonna bring us in to the proper rotation, the proper alignment, and the proper depth that we planned. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut. So you can see I'm, I'm holding the robot, I'm the one doing it. If I wanna let go, I can let go. Also, the robot has a haptic system. So if, if for any reason the saw is coming out of the plane, it's going too deep, the robot itself will actually shut off. So we went out of bounds there. It'll bring us back into the right plane and we'll continue starting. So typically on a non-robotic system, uh, the way that you measure out these cuts is you have to put a rod down the femur uh, and you're using cutting blocks and measuring jigs. With the robotic system, we're able to pre-plan what angles, how much depth we want, we want to cut, and that way we can just be precise and cut it once and, uh, and properly balance the knee. All right, so we finished our cuts on the femur and we're gonna move to cut around the tibia. We're gonna verify that the tibial checkpoint has not moved and it has not. So now that we made our cuts, the robot can come out. Now we're gonna put the trial implants in and see how balanced the knee is, see if we need to do anything else. So now we're here in extension and we can see we're nice 20 millimeters on the inside, 20 millimeters on the outside. And then we're gonna come into flexion and we see we're nice 20 millimeters on the inside, 20 millimeters on the outside. This knee is perfectly balanced and the kneecap is tracking nicely. We'll check the stability. 
the knee feels nice and stable in both flexion and extension. So at this point, we can actually take the arrays out. That's one of the biggest advantages of doing a Mako total knee or a robotic total knee is because we do all the planning up front and then we get to execute that plan. We don't have to go back and redo cuts, retry things and go back and forth. The precision and accuracy of, of what we're doing is really powerful. So now we're gonna open up the implants on the back table. We'll clean out the knee and then prepare to put the implants in. So again, we were able to, you know, before the case even started, know what size femur we were gonna use. We were able to manipulate the position of the femur to perfectly fit her bone and go down to the proper size and then flex to get it on there. And then when we were actually planning it, we changed the position of the femur, the rotation. We changed the position of the tibia so that we got a fully balanced knee, 20 millimeter gaps all the way around. And we'll fill that 20 millimeter gap up with different size plastic inserts. Now we're gonna cement the femur and then we're gonna try our plastic insert trial one more time just to make sure that we like the gap. And now we put our patella on and clamp it into place. Well, now the implants have been cemented in place. Take the knee in full extension. The knee is nice and straight, great alignment. And the knee is nice and stable in flexion as well. We see the knee goes all the way to full extension. It has great range of motion. And now we're gonna close up. After this patient goes to the recovery room, they'll spend about an hour, hour and a half in phase one and then they'll go up to phase two, where they'll work with the nurses on the floor as well as physical therapy to start walking with a walker initially and uh, get ready there for a safe discharge home, typically the same day. At Ortho Colorado, we're combining a facility where every single nurse, every staff member, all they do is orthopedics all day, every single day, and they're specialized in taking care of your problem. Not only do I have the opportunity to do Mako Total Knee Arthroplasty, but I have an opportunity to do that at Ortho Colorado, which is Colorado's only orthopedic specialty hospital.